to welcome you back to A and A for another adventure today. Uh, picked this truck up last night from a uh, young man. We'll go to church with him, his mother. And, uh, the the front wheel is well. It's not supposed to be like that. Uh, he stated that truck was uh, slowing down. It went, didn't want to move forward. Having trouble with the brakes and steering and sounded like a catastrophic event. So I go to pick it up. Crank fine. And it would back up okay, but I could hear all types of noise. And of course driving forward. And this was at night, so I didn't see the wheel like this. It was dark. So pulling forward it did not want to go forward and did not want to go straight once i got it on the trailer and was strapping it down then i realized what the wheel looked like now the passenger side passenger side looks okay i suspect the bearings gave out and uh, now we're just, we're riding on the spindle, um, which is not good. The brake caliper is, uh, no telling of what that thing looks like. I would imagine the inside of the wheel is damaged. I, I don't know what we're going to find, but how about we take this wheel off and let's just take a look, see what we can find in here. There, we've got it, uh, got it jacked up off the bed of the trailer and, uh, I don't know, it seems fine to me. I guess we can take the wheel off and uh, see if we can find anything wrong with it. Okay, I started, uh, I took the hubcap off. I started taking these uh, wheel fasteners off and the, uh, the dust cap and the spindle nut just fell right out. So it looks like the the nut worked itself off and we're not riding on the bearings anymore. I don't know what is damaged. Uh, hopefully the spindle is not damaged, but it's a decent chance that it is. Let's go ahead and get all this stuff off and see what we can find. Okay, I got the wheel off. Um, before we look at that, let's go ahead and look under here. So, looks like the spindle nut came off. Um, and then the uh, your brake rotor, was, which was what your wheel is mounted to, is then able to freely just move back and forth. Uh, looks like he may have already been in need of some brake pads, but uh, anyway. So when the when the wheel was able to come out like that, it pushed his brake piston back in. Um, I don't know. A series of things has happened, but. The cause was the spindle nut worked itself off and then you had all this uh, free movement. These are uh, shavings from the inside of the wheel as it rubbed up against his upper control arm right here. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a good bit of that. Um, not too, that's a nice long one, man. You could like, make something like that I don't see like a lot of damage it caused as far as you know uh, I do see a leak something is dripping under there I'm not sure exactly what that is not sure if that's water or a fluid but we will definitely check that out um, the only thing I'm really concerned with, really, is his brakes. Uh, I want to get this caliper off. Um, actually, his uh, his brake rotor may be okay. Um, might take it and have it turned and see. There's no there's no ridge on it right now. Uh, might get them to check it and see if they can't turn this. 
Uh, we don't want to like just throw a bunch of parts and money at it because if we cut it quick enough, you know, we may we may be out some uh, some wheel bearings. Of course, now if this one came off, what about the other side? Even if we replace these, we'll replace both sides. I mean, that's that's what you call a no-brainer. So let me go ahead and get the brake caliper off. We'll get this brake rotor off. I want to inspect the condition of the spindle. If it's not gouged and marred up, if it's still nice and smooth uh, without any scratches, then hopefully all I need to do is put some bearings in it. Uh, his power steering pump whines really loud, and he said it was doing that before any of this happened. Um, so while we've got it here, we may just put a power steering pump on it as well. Um, I'll crank it and let you listen to that. But I want to see, I want to see what's leaking right there. Um, I don't know if that's water or fluid. Let's put our finger in it. I stuck my finger in it. It's not oily. Uh, hopefully it's just some water. I don't know where it would be coming from, but um, we're going to pull this under the shop, but I didn't want to move it like another inch after I saw the condition of the wheel. I didn't want to move it anymore until we got we got this remedied. You don't want to cause any more damage. Now let's look at the wheel itself. Uh, the tire... doesn't seem it may be a little chafed slightly this is from the aluminum wheel coming rubbing off maybe chafed just a little bit on the edge now the wheel where it was rubbing and scrubbing all right that's you know that's a little you can say it's damaged it's not going to hurt anything as far as the function uh you might cut your finger on it if you you know run your hand back there or something but no biggie there. Um, tire, from what I can see, everything looks good. I don't see any damage on the tire. So we're good there. All right, I started taking this part uh, late last night. And a couple of things. The uh, spindle seems to be still in good shape. So we won't have to get a new knuckle and um probably gonna take some uh really fine sandpaper maybe some thousand grit or something like that i'm gonna run around here because your your seal that's on the inside of your um <coughs> of the uh, brake rotor because you know with with this vehicle your brake rotor houses the bearings and the seal on the back, so the wheel kind of, it may have damaged the, you know, where that seal rides right up here. It may have kind of scratched it a little bit on the edges, so we're going to uh, get that back smooth, put some thousand grit on it, something like that, and uh, get it nice and slick again, so our seal We'll, uh, we'll ride on that okay. And as you can see, the ABS sensor uh, has seen better days. It, it, got, it got damaged, so that would definitely not work correctly. So that sensor comes with, uh, it's actually bolted to, you know, this piece right here. So the sensor in this piece and the wire, it'll all come as a little assembly. And uh, so all we gotta do is take these bolts out. So I'll take these bolts out and get that old sensor out of the way. That'll give us room to really polish on that uh, surface right there where our seal will be right. Um, the brake caliper, um, I popped the brakes. 
so that cylinder would come out and I pressed the cylinder back in, seemed to be okay. <clears throat> the brake pads, on one of them, the pad is entirely gone. I think it may just got knocked off. On the other one, the pad is still there. Um, however, slight bit of damage to it, but we're gonna replace the pads on both sides. Um, the slide pins are bent. You can see right there, that's where the brake rotor hit was rubbing. Uh, that one is bent. You can probably see this one's, this one's bent closer up here than that one. But anyway, they're both bent. So uh, one other thing that, that was, did not come out that uh, is missing is the, is the washer. You know, once you put the brake caliper on, it's got your bearing in the seal in the back. You put the bearing in the front and then there's a washer that slides on and it's got a little tang on it that rides in this groove right here. You put the washer on before you put the nut on. Well, the, there is no washer. Um, and I'm thinking that that may have led to the failure. Not sure, but it definitely didn't help. So we've got washer coming. <clears throat> New set of bearings. The brake rotor on this side was slightly damaged and going to put a new brake rotor. I wanted to show you something else I've noticed on um, this door. You see how high the alignment is here on the edge? This side is, the door is too high on this, on this edge. Um, you can kind of see it a little bit so see that gap right there as you go down the gap gets bigger towards the bottom but I don't see I don't see any way to adjust it on the hinges the hinges are the, the brackets are welded and then you got the pin through those I don't see any adjustment there what we may can do uh, is loosen this and if it will slide up or down uh, just so that the door doesn't, you know, do that when you try to close it. Just taking a look under here, um, if we can spot some things we're making help James out with. James is a young man that owns a truck. Radiator hose looks it's okay. The belt, you know, you, you look you look at where the ribs are uh, kind of spread open like that. They're not cracked, so that's fine. Belt's fine. Um, other than, you know, a vehicle of this age, it looked like the water pump at some point was replaced on. See the little shiny part down there. Um, that all looks fine. I don't see any problems with anything. Um, not much cooling in the bottle there. So what we may do is once we get ready to uh, back it off the trailer, crank it up, let it warm up, and uh, observe for any uh, leaking coolant or anything like that to make sure that uh, you know we weren't seeing any of that stuff leaking. It's kind of low on coolant too. Hmm. That could be a little concerning, not sure. So there again, we definitely wanna, definitely wanna look for some leaks, possible leaks. If the coolant is low, reservoir is low, <coughs> could be a leak. 
Let's see. Oil is slightly low. It's okay. Might add a little bit. Okay, I feel pretty good about going ahead and, and ordering parts. Um, his power steering pump was was really whining um, when we picked it up, but now, you know, thinking about it, and it's, where is it at? That's it right there. Down there, that's it. Um, given that the wheel was in such bad condition and was coming apart at the seams, that would have put strain on the steering that would have made the pump whine. He said it had a little wine in it before anyway. Um, so what we could do <clears throat> is we could, uh, we could uh, drain some of his power steering fluid. Uh, I don't have a machine to flush it. We could definitely drain and refill with uh, uh, a Lucas power steering fluid conditioner may actually take the wine out of it we'll we'll give that a shot for him too well let's get some parts ordered and uh, then we'll see you back we got our uh half of our parts in we're waiting on the other half they're supposed to be here uh supposed to be here today about lunch time so i'm out here just tinkering around on it and i fixed the uh fixed the door closing to where it closes so much better uh, I did not move the latch. Um, what I did was I rolled his window down and I, I hung my overweight body on this door. Um, I figured at some point, something has pushed the door up, got it out of alignment. So I hung my overweight body on the outside of this door. Now it closes great. Lines up perfect fixed all right so i polished the spindle i got it back um pretty much as mirror of a finish as i can get uh, i may hit this this is where the inner bearing rides uh or at least the race sits here so not the race you know what i'm talking about um, I need to hit this again, polish that a little bit, but uh, got that cleaned up. It did have a couple of burrs on it. Um, one was right here. It got smacked pretty good. Anyway, I got that sanded down. It's all nice and clean now. Started with 220 grit. Then I moved up to just a 3000 to finish polishing it. On the passenger side, which you know, we never had an issue with it, but when you're replacing bearings and brake shoes and stuff, uh, brake pads, excuse me, um, I wanted to give this side equal attention. So uh, I hit that with the 3000, hit that with the 3000, hit with this, the 3000, cleaned it up. Uh, it's still in really good shape. So uh, that one's ready to go. The uh, brake rotor on this side was not damaged. Uh, I was able to get the bearing races out of it, both the inner and the outer. So this one's ready for the new races to go in uh, and bearings and then a seal. And uh, it'll be ready to go back on. The side that had the, uh, we had the issue on, uh, of course, the your analog brake system. This is a wheel speed sensor, um, and as you can see, it got pretty well hammered. Uh, and so we've got a new one of those coming. And uh, so I took this took this backing plate off. Uh, it's just held on by a couple of bolts up there. So I took it off because. Uh, it's, it's got some retainers on the back. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how they work. So I gotta get my screwdriver. I think they just bend. I think they just bend up anyway. Get this off, but I didn't want to take it off yet. 
I might forget exactly how, you know, how much slack we had here and all this. So I'm gonna wait for the new one to come in. Then I'm gonna take those off, put the new one on, get it bolted back. The uh, pigtail connector is, uh, it's back in here and it, it's, it's hidden pretty well. But anyway, uh, waiting on the rest of the parts. They should be in here in a couple of hours and then we will uh, start the reassembly. Well, the only part that I got today was the um, ABS wheel, sen wheel speed sensor. And it does come with a new uh, backing plate here. So I can take the old one off, discard it. Um, Cause we got a whole new backing plate. And that's why these little clips back here are not easy to get off because they're, they're made into it. So we'll change that out right quick. Okay, one, uh, one thing we did get was the bearings. And I know that uh, y'all have probably seen this a million times, other videos or whatever, but um, your bearings come in two pieces. You have a cup and a cone. And when you hear people say your bearing and your race, the race is what the bearing rides inside of and it's tapered on the inside. This would be what they call a cup and the actual bearing that goes on the inside is the cone. And so it would, it goes just like that. And these, these little bearings right here, they ride inside of that tapered area. The old races I have already gotten out and the way you get those out is, um, if I wanted to get this one out right here, which it's already out, but to get it out, I have to flip the rotor over, get something like this, some rod, heavy rod, get on the lip of it, and then beat it out with, uh, with this hammer right here. So you beat the old races out and then you, uh, you have to have a uh, bearing and seal installer, uh, a kit that has a bunch of different sizes of these depending on what you're trying to install. Now, the ideal thing is if you're installing a race, if you have uh, the perfect size that will fit inside the race, you know, without actually uh, binding up on the side and the, and the lip of this little installer, if it will sit on the outside lip of this race, such as this does right here, that's what you're after. Sometimes they don't, and what you'll do is you'll flip this over like this and you'll, you'll still use, once you screw it all back in, you'll still use the surface to pound that race in. It's just, you have to be careful about keeping it, you know, centered and on that. So the ideal thing is if you have one the right size is to use it this way so that you don't have to worry about it coming off center making sure that it's on the lip of your race because uh, that's what this does. So I've cleaned uh, the inside of this where the race is gonna go. The old race has been removed, this is clean. So now the, the flatter side with your, with your part numbers on it will go down and the thinner lip goes up because you want your bearing to sit down in here like that so you put that in you get it you know as even as you can we're going to plop that in there like that take your hammer now you want it to start in even so if one side is a little up higher than the other you'll want to try and concentrate pressure on that high side so we're good and flat and i'm going to give it one hard blow all right, she started. Now it's a little high over here on this side, so I'm gonna try to concentrate a little pressure over there. All right, she straightened up. And 
So now it's going, it hasn't bottomed out yet. So I'm gonna keep doing this as long as it's, uh, as it's still going down. When it, when it bottoms out, you will feel and hear a different sound. Oh, you hear that? That's a hard, solid sound. It has, it has bottomed out. So we know that that race is now fully installed. Make sure there's no burrs, make sure it's still good and smooth, perfect. Uh, so that's how you install a race. And uh, now we just gotta wait on the rest of the parts because we can't go really any further. Um, I've already installed the race on the other side uh, right here. So the races are installed on here. This is on the passenger side. This is the old rotor for the passenger side. It was okay. The new rotor that we got for the driver's side, it hasn't arrived yet. And when it comes, I'll show you that the new rotors, they will come with races already installed and we will, we will just use those. So the races that came with our Baron, we will probably discard those for the other wheel because uh, the new, uh, the new, uh, the new rotor will come with uh, the races already installed. All right, it's the following week and we finally got the rest of our parts in. One of the seals was bent. Uh, they just kind of put them loose in the box with the, with the new rotor. So got jostled around in shipping and one of the seals got bent. But anyway, I've got a replacement. So the passenger side is done. Uh, same, the, uh, the old brake rotor, new bearings, new seal, new brake pads, new slide pins. That one's done. So now, um, let me show you the step-by-step -step I do on the, uh, on the driver's side, the one that we really had the problem with. Okay, uh, I had showed you where I'd put the, uh, the new backing plate. It came with the analog brake system, uh, wheel speed sensor, new backing plate and everything. That was great. Um, so now what we need to do, I've already cleaned the, the spindle. We've, we've polished this with our sandpaper. Um, we've got the new brake rotor. More times than not, the new brake rotor will come with the new bearing races or cups installed already. Uh, some people remove these and put in the races that come with uh, the new bearings. Of course, we purchase new bearings and they come with races, okay? But I've never had any issue with using the races that come with the new rotor. Uh, I don't know of anybody who has ever had an issue with those. They'll remove them because they say they're made in China. They'd rather have these. Well, you know what? These are actually made in USA. I was about to say they're all made in China, but no. Okay, so these are made in USA, but never had a problem using the races at company. So just, that's all I'm trying to say. Uh, first step is going to be to pack our new bearings. We'll start with, uh, with the, the inner inside the wheel. We'll pack that bearing and put it in, and then we'll, we'll install our seal. We'll get that onto the spindle, get this assembly onto the spindle, and then we will pack the small bearing. We'll get it on there, and then I'll show you how we tighten the spindle nut correctly so it's not too tight and it's not too loose. All right, so if you've never seen anybody pack a bearing before, it's extremely simple. Everybody's kind of got their own way. Uh, as usual, mine is just uh, haphazard, and but it works. Very simple. Let me show you. First step, pull your sleeves up. Make sure you don't have any good clothes on that your wife is uh, Gonna be highly upset at you about getting grease on. Put your uh, nitro glove, nitro gloves on. Um, then we're gonna start with this inner bearing, which is the larger one. And 
and I'm sorry I can't give you a better view because I left my tripod. I think I left it at church. I'm not sure. Anyway, so you remember me saying these bearings come as a cup and cone. The race being the cup and the bearing being the cone because it's kind of cone shaped. Makes sense. The cone goes into the cup. All right, so this race be fine, but I've already got a race that came with the wheel. I mean the uh, brake rotor. So I'm on. I'm just going to use that. I'm not going to throw the this race away though. Uh, put that in inventory. Put that in stock because you never know, man. Take the bearing. You take your uh, high temperature multi vehicle red grease. Take my bearing and I just get down in here and I just scoop nice big glob. I put I put this in my in my hand. Nice glob of grease. You're gonna take your bearing and you're gonna push the bearing into grease and then roll it as you're pushing it. And what you're trying to do is force grease into all these little rollers, little roller bearings. Trying to force grease in there because there's an inner part of this bearing and there's an outer part. You also want to force it in between those. And the only way to do it is to squish it. That's a technical term. Uh, once you don't have a lot of grease left in your hand, get some more and continue squishing it. You're going to squish it and you're going to get, you're going to see it start to come out. As you squish it on one side, you're going to see it start coming out of the other side. And you just keep doing that until it looks like you're not getting any more grease in that bearing. You can take it and then you can hold the inside part and roll the outside part, you know, like, I don't know if you can see this, hold, hold the inside, take hold the outside so that those little roller bearings are rolling. Roll, around, roll that around a few times and then squish it some more. I guess there is a such thing as too much grease if you're just bathing in it and you're getting it on everything like brake rotor, brake surfaces, that's too much. All right, so we've, we, we've got it pretty squished now. We're gonna put some more grease, but we want this bearing saturated with grease inside uh, because when we do uh, start the truck and we take it for a test drive, we don't want uh, those bearings to be rolling around in there dry. So, or you'll burn a bearing it like extremely fast. There's a little glob hanging out there. We'll squish some of that in there if it'll go. And just, you know, let's get a little extra on the outside. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. Now we're gonna take this. Now this is the cone. The cup came pre-installed in the rotor. And we're gonna set this into the cup like that. Now we're going to install the seal next. After we install the seal, we're going to put some extra grease like between the seal and the bearing and just inside the bearing here in this hole. Uh, so it can kind of feed off of a little reservoir of grease, um, you know, while you're driving. Uh, if you got a little extra left on your glove, take it, you can put it back in the can or you can just wipe it here on the edge of this bearing. Grease is a bearing's friend. All right, so we got that. Let's get the seal. I'm gonna show you how we install the seal. There's really two different kinds of seals. Uh, and I'm gonna show you which one I got versus the one that uh, uh, I could have gotten. Both are the same, it's just, uh, a preference. So let me get that seal and we'll show you how we install that. All right, here is my wheel seal. Basically it's an outer metal ring with a inner uh, rubber seal. Go figure. Um, this 
rubber part rides on, you know, the part of the wheel I show you that we had we had sanded on. You know, this the surface up here. That's what the seal rides on that up there, the rubber part. The uh, the metal part metal part gets hammered. Well, the whole seal does, but the metal part grabs a hold of the inside of this right here. So when you're putting a when you're putting a seal on. I don't know how well you can see that. You see what that side looks like. And you see this side, it looks a little more hollow. I don't know another word to use for it. It looks a little more hollow than this side. This side looks a little more solid than that side. This hollow side, go, it faces to the inside of the brake rotor. So the bearing that we just dropped in there that we packed with grease, this will be facing that bearing. The hollow side will face the bearing. So the way we get them in there, sit it right here. And of course, it's, it's gonna have to be tapped in. So, uh, if we tap one side, the opposite side is going to pop up. So you're going to have to hold it, hold it with your fingers. And we're not going to, we're not going to hit it hard. We're tapping. Tap that side. This side popped up. Tap that side. It's kind of like whack-a-mole. As soon as he pops up, tap him. And it will start. It will start going in. But if it pops up on one side, hold the other side and tap the side that popped up. She will start eventually. This one don't want to, but there we go. It will eventually start. Just play whack-a-mole with it. looking pretty good all right I failed to show you the difference in the seals I'm sorry if you saw this seal well I showed it to you it was round it didn't have a flange sticking out on the edge that would act as a stop so like that if it had a flange on it it would rest on the surface of this and I could tap it you know, wouldn't have to worry about it going in too far. The little flange would be like a stop, you know. It would go in so far and that's it. This particular seal doesn't have that flange. And it, it's the same seal, just doesn't have the flange to act as a stop. And it's no big deal because I'm not using, I'm not using anything that would press it in too far. So, if they show you two seals at the auto parts store and it says, hey, it says either one of these, one may have a flange and one may not, it's going to be the same seal. It's going to be your preference. Uh, in this case, the one I took out of the wheel didn't have the flange, so I just opted for the one that didn't have a flange. All right, so we'll show you this. <clears throat> so we've got our, we've got our packed bearing. And our seal installed, it looks really good. Now, before I slide this onto the spindle and we start tightening spindle nuts and stuff like that, you need to be aware that new brake rotors have a coating of oil on them because it um, helps prevent rust. Um, you know, after the manufacture of it and during shipping, if they didn't put some type of rust protectant on it like oil, uh, it would it would rust it would flash rust and uh, which wouldn't hurt anything it just pay a lot of money for a brake rotor and you'd rather not, not arrive rusted take some brake clean carburetor cleaner spray on a paper towel and you're just going to clean the oil off of that brake rotor how much came off do the other side be 
because the surface that your brake pad is pressing against to stop the car doesn't work well when it's got grease on it. It doesn't stop very well. All right, so you remember me saying we're gonna put a little extra grease in here. Well, between that bearing that's packed that we put in there and the seal, there's a little bit of space in there. We're gonna take, we're gonna take our one finger salute finger, get some grease on it, and we're going to wipe it into that void that's between the seal and that bearing that we packed. What you're doing is, is you're providing grease for that bearing to feed off of. You know, if uh, you're on doing interstate speeds and uh, you know on a long trip, bearings warm up, your wheels warm up, and heaven forbid there's a spot where this bearing isn't getting greased. If you've got plenty in here for it to feed off of, which means that grease will weep into that bearing if you have it packed in here good like that. So we've got a bearing packed, we got our seal on, the inner seal. Um there's not an outer seal. So we got our seal on, we got our bearing pack. We're ready to slide this onto the spindle. I'm gonna slide you around here so you can see. So let's go ahead and we're going to. So that spindle is going to go through the bearing, the seal. Just make sure, do it carefully. You don't want to damage your nice new seal. Okay, we didn't do something. I forgot. Let's take some of this grease here. We're going to rub it onto the surface that our seal is going to be riding on. That way it don't start out dry. All right, so we got that greased. And use your one finger, one finger salute finger. All right, put this back on carefully. Now your seal. is the seal is gonna be a little bit tough to get it up on that, but rotate and put pressure. All right, you see how that slid on like that? That's that seal getting up on that surface that it rides on. Now, that's the inner bearing. Now we gotta pack the outer bearing. It's the same process. There is a race already installed, so I'm gonna save my race. And I may not bore you with this, I may just cut to the uh, finished product, but I'm going to pack this bearing and I'm going to put it on the outside of my brake rotor. All right, so we got the bearing packed, the outer bearing. Now, we need to take a little bit of grease and we need to kind of push it into the void that's going to be back behind this bearing. Uh, like I say, to give it a little something to feed off of. And there's nothing clean about this, so you'll probably want to change gloves two or three times while you're doing stuff like this. There's just there's just no way to ain't gonna be no way to stay clean while you're doing this stuff. So just want to push it in there. Is it messy? You better believe it. Um, get a little more right up in here. That should be good enough. Uh, we're also going to, I'll show you later too, with this cap, our dust cap we put on, we're going to fill it full of grease before we put it on there. All right, our bearing. And you, you can tell which way you you need to put it in because the uh, the cup and the cone, you know, they fit together in a way. So you'll, you'll realize. Um, all right, I got a little bit of grease on my brake rotor right here. I got to clean that off. 
Then we're going to uh, put the uh, dust cover on, and I'll show you how to tighten the spindle nut. All right. Um, so the next thing we need to put on is our uh, our washer and our um, spindle nut and our cotter pin. This washer was not on this spindle when we took when we disassembled the sign. So I don't know if um, that led to the failure, but it, it definitely didn't help because the spindle nut had basically worked itself off. The bearings had moved out and then the rotor completely destroyed the bearings. Not to mention the, uh, the cotter pin was completely destroyed. I don't know if they used too small of a cotter pin. That, in addition to no washer, uh, was a recipe for failure in this particular case. So uh, if you'll notice this washer, see it's got a little tang on it. Well, our spindle, that I showed you earlier, it's got a, uh, like a keyway cut in it. Well, that's where this tang rides. So after you put the bearing, you'll line this washer up with that little keyway. Okay, we're gonna take our spindle nut it's also called a castle nut. Can you tell why? Look like a little castle. Start it on by hand. Threads are just a little bit rough because of the failure over on this side. I think it's going to be okay. Um, Okay, once you tighten your spindle nut, oh, about 20 foot pounds, your wheel will be difficult to turn. That has seated your bearing, the seal, everything's seated. But you can't, you can't leave it like this. The wheel's too hard to turn. You'll have premature bearing failure. You'll want to loosen it about a fourth of a turn and your, your spindle nut will be loose at that point. Well, if my threads went rough, it would be. See how that's much easier to turn? All right, so now we have to put a cotter pin. And that's, I guess that's what I'm trying to show you is you tighten it to seat the bearings, but you can't leave it that way. Your wheel has to spin freely. like that, but you can't have any. So there's no play this way. The wheel's easy to turn. All right, great. Now we need a cotter pin to go through the hole of our spindle. Now the slots in the castle nut have to line up with the hole in your spindle. Need to tighten this one just a tad bit for it to line up. Straighten them up. Take the legs of your cotter pin and everybody has a different way of doing this too. Just do your thing. I'll just bend one up one side and one up the other side. There we go. Okay, now let me get you in here and show you what that looks like. All right, so that's what that looks like. Wheel still, turn, wheel still turns easy. All right, so now we gotta put our dust cap and we're gonna fill it with grease uh, just so this front bearing has additional grease to feed on if it needs it. So 
So all we do there is take this dust cap, take your grease, and you'll want to fill this thing up oh, about three-fourths of the way, something like that. That way when we, when we push it on and we tap it on, it's going to be forcing grease around the edge of that washer and into the bearing as well. That's going to help that bearing uh, have a nice long life ahead of it. Running kind of low on grease. I may have to get my grease gun to fill this up, but I'm going to scrape what I can out of it and uh, get it in my dust cup here. All right, I had to get my grease dunk gun to finish filling it up because I'm, I'm out of grease. So I've got a dust cap full of grease. A uh, little bit messy around the edge of that. So we're going to going to push this on, uh, and you'll you'll feel and hear the grease squishing around that stuff. Now, now we're going to tap it on. Again, kind of like whack a mole. Not quite as bad. Don't hit on the outside of this cap right here. Or you you'll definitely dent that. We're hitting on the flanges of it. Just back and forward. All right. Got it nice and flush there. Just a tiny bit of grease around the edge there, so that's all right. Okay, we got that. Now it's time to put the brake pads on. Um, that's pretty simple. We've got new slide pins. So uh, I'm just gonna let you watch. See if I can get you up here. Again, apologize for the angle. All right, make our brake caliper. You got two different kinds of pads. One of them have this little has this little metal shelf on it. See right here. That one's going to go on the uh, the outside because it fits fits in these little grooves right here. All right, so that's there. Now the inner one's a little tricky because it's got this um, wear indicator on it. It uh, if I go ahead and put it in and then try to get, get the caliper on, it's, it's interfering. So what we have to do is basically put the pad in first, then get the, if I can hold my mouth right, I need them two other hands. All else fails, regroup. Caliper may have got slightly damaged because my pad's not going to seat entirely correctly. All right, so I think our caliper has gotten slightly damaged. I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I'm going to have to grind have to grind that ear the side off just a tad or else it's not going to fit. All right, so I just I just touched it a little bit with the grinder and now they now that fits much much better. So what I was doing before was having to basically Put the pad in first, hold it, and then put and then put the brake caliper. I don't know if it's supposed to be this hard or not, but um, I'm definitely making it that way. All right, it looks something similar. And we need our slide 
slide pins. Got our slide pin. I'm gonna try to put the one in the top first. Because the slide pin actually holds, um, it actually holds that sh the inner brake pad. It actually holds it in place. And once you do this job, you'll you'll realize that the only thing holding that inner pad in place is a slide pin. Um, all I need to do now is tighten up my two slide pins. I'm going to see if I can't turn the wheel this way to give me some more room back there. Yep, that did the trick. I talked to James, who's the owner of the truck, about the coolant leak, and he said that he had a coolant leak that he knew about, but that um, someone had replaced the hose and that was supposed to have fixed it, but the, um, the coolant leak appears to be coming from the intake manifold, which if you do a Google search, that's one of the main complaints of this particular engine or one of the most common uh, repair issues is a coolant leak from the intake. And so it looks like uh, he didn't miss out on that little gift. But uh, like most of us, you know, he don't have, uh, he just don't have funds, you know, never ending fun, fun source available and I, I can, Dude, I can relate to that, man. Um, the leak will be a nuisance, and he will definitely have to keep an eye on it. Um, but he should be okay until maybe, maybe in the spring, we'll get this back, and we'll do uh, we'll take the intake off, and we'll uh, we'll assess the intake gasket. Um, see if there's anything else while we're in there that might need attention, but we'll probably do that in the spring um, because we just happen to have a couple of warm days right now, but colder weather is definitely on the way. So I got a little bit of smudges on the brake surface. I'm going to get those off. A little bit of grease right there. Get that. All right. Um, as far as the repair, as to what uh, as to what happened, I think we're all good and fixed now. Um, yeah, that's a little tight. We'll uh, we'll take it for a test drive. Um, we'll put some antifreeze in it first because the coolant is is really low. Um, we'll take it for a test drive. Uh, test his brakes, his steering. So uh, I'm going to clean up around here a little bit, get some of these tools put up. Um, and then I'm just going to put his, his wheels back on. Uh, we torqued those lug nuts at 100 foot pounds. And I have to get it off this trailer. We'll put the coolant, uh, check his brake fluid. And uh, then we'll take it down the road for a little test drive and see how it does. All right, so we just got back from the test drive in James's truck, and uh, 
couple things. He's got some dash lights that are on. I, I've asked him if they were already on. Uh, we've got a the ABS light is on, and I thought it might have been because of the new sensor we put on. Um, I don't, but so I've asked him if the lights were already on. We got an ABS light, service engine soon light. Uh, we got a check engine light. So while I'm waiting on a response from him, we had a the truck's pulling hard to the right. Uh, it's not surprising after the uh, the failure we had on this wheel right here. So uh, he's going to need a wheel alignment, but we can kind of rough it in uh, so that it's not so so hard on him uh, while he's getting it to the alignment shop. Uh, we can do a rough alignment here. I'll show you how. Uh, you take a piece of string, get you something to tie it to. You can use two chairs. I use two jack stands. And so you'll, what you want to do when you pull the vehicle up onto a nice flat level surface, piece of concrete, whatever, uh, straighten the steering wheel much as possible. Get it as straight as you can. Uh, like I say, this isn't exact. This is just kind of get it close. All right, so I'm going to uh, pick this up a little bit. Make sure your string is in the center of you know whatever it is you want everything to be relative so we're going to make sure it's in the center here we're going to and you can do this different ways um so i'm gonna get mine just almost touching not quite it's about a sixteenth away from the wheel let's go back here though in the back <coughs> Uh, this one needs to be just a bit closer. All right, so on the back wheel, of course, you can't align the back wheel. You just want to get it as close as you can. All right, so I don't think I have my wheels entirely straight yet. Let's get this other side lined up. We'll see. I'm going to get uh, that string. So my wheels need to come to the right just a little because of I don't know something like that all right now let's check all right so I've got about I don't know if you can tell about an eighth of an inch between the string and the tire there and on this side there's about Three quarters of an inch. Let's see about this side now. Alright, so this side's about a it's about an eighth of an inch. This side's about a quarter of an inch. Let's just bump the wheels over to the right just a little bit. We want to get it to where it can drive down the road fairly straight until it gets to the alignment shop. Alright, that's about... Still a little bit off, but... Okay, so the front of this wheel needs to go in. The back needs to come out. So... Just remember, the front of this wheel needs to go in. So the way we do that, we have to adjust the y'all. Uh, have to adjust the tie rod in. Linkage right there. Take them two pinch bolts loose, and that's an adjusting sleeve. So what we're going to have to do is adjust it so that the front portion of this wheel will in some. Not a lot. So, what I'll do is that's a half inch, uh, those are half inch bolts. Go ahead and turn this off. Those are half inch bolts. So, I'll loosen those. I'll take my pipe wrench, and they're not hard to turn. You know, as you can see, this one in particular, it's got a lot of oil on it. Well, that. <laughs> While the leak is not good, it helps these things to turn easier. So, 
let's pull the front of this wheel in just a little we'll straighten the wheels back up and we'll check it okay so I adjusted and I'm gonna show you the passenger side is really close um, I don't think the passenger side is a problem I've got about about an eighth of an inch it's about the same distance from front to back wheel on the passenger side on the driver's side after I adjusted it it'll focus that's about an eighth or less that's way more alright so the front the front of this wheel needs to go in a little bit more. Slight bit more adjustment, we'll take it again. Alright, um, I did a rough wheel alignment and we're going to see how straight it is on the road. Uh, still have the analog brake light and a service engine soon light. Not 100% sure what the cause of those are, but um, Hopefully they were already on uh, previously. Let's see if this thing will uh, drive any straighter than it did. It's a little bit better, not a whole lot. It's better. Uh, this will get him to the alignment shop, but uh, it's, it's definitely pulling to the right pretty bad. Um, you know, it could be that the tire got damaged in that, uh, and it's making it pull to the right. That can happen. You get some trauma to the tire and some of those steel belts um, and cause it to pull. So that's the best we can do uh, without an alignment shop. So we'll let him take it there and get them to check that out. But uh, the vehicle is, uh, you know, Repaired. The power steering isn't making noise anymore. Um, the power steering fluid was low, and so we topped it off with some Lucas uh, power steering fluid that has conditioners in it. Helps it to run much smoother, much quieter. And I haven't heard the power steering fault whine the first time. Uh, since then Alright, so we're going to call this repair done Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you uh, hope you can get something from it might help you with your project If nothing else hope you got a little entertainment out of it Well, we're gonna get this truck back to James uh, So he can can have his wheels back You guys have a good day, please subscribe if you haven't already be glad for you to do that no matter what though remember be kind to one another see you next time